Welcome back to the Hypnosis Hour. Um, I, I, uh, I want to just take the, the next question from Bill, and I'm getting a little squirrely because this segment we're going to talk about magic underwear. Yeah. Bill writes, what is it about this magic underwear I hear about all the time? Let me tell you something. I can pull bunnies out of my pants like that. It is fantastic. No, seriously. I win every card game I'm in. Uh, this is a very difficult thing because this is a very difficult thing to do as a member and it is um, never discussed because it is, it is to remind us of something very sacred. It's almost like a yarmulke. You know how people wear yarmulkes and, they, and it's to remind you that God is always above you. Um, that's what this is. Um, it looks just like a t-shirt. Uh, this is just like boxer shorts and they go down to about here and men and women wear them. It's a reminder of the promises that we make at the temple. Many of our traditions are very similar to Jewish traditions. Um, Jewish people wear something called the tzitzit. Um, and you see them and I mean I don't know why and we wouldn't make fun of that. The garments represent um, a promise to be faithful and modest, uh, modest and temperate. And it is not easy. It's not easy for guys, um, especially in Texas, because it's hot. Um, and it sucks sometimes because your wife can't be hot. You know what I'm saying? Um, he, my wife goes out to the store and she tries to buy a dress, and it's so frustrating. This was really hard for her for the first couple of years. Um, it's really hard. But... Sometimes you do things that are really hard and you keep your promises in your covenant because it means something. It teaches you to be obedient and it's meaningful. And because it's hard and because it is so sacred to us, it makes it more hurtful when people mock. We had some questions about caffeine. Um, it may come as a surprise. There's no official church doctrine about the use of caffeine. Um, I didn't find this out until I was at, uh, I was, I ordered a Sprite and my bishop said, I'll have a Coke. And I'm like, what? What do, what do you mean I have a Coke? He's like, what do you mean what am I having a Coke? I said, what about the caffeine thing? He said, Glenn, there's no caffeine. There's no, it's not in there. There is um, advice against alcohol, tobacco, tea for some reason, and coffee for some reason. Uh, some people interpret that as caffeine. Um, it's a suggestion that caffeine may not be entirely good for the body, and so we try to avoid things that are bad for the body, but I drink Coke, and it's not official doctrine. Uh, it, it is interesting because uh, over 130 years before the Surgeon General's warning on tobacco, the church advised its members to refrain from chewing or smoking tobacco, and a lot of them did, um, and people didn't understand it then. Why? What's the problem? I don't know. Just not supposed to do it. Didn't. It worked out pretty well. In fact, I think it's like an eight year, the lifespan of a Mormon, a, a devout Mormon, I think is like five or eight years longer than the average American. Have to do with the clean living? Probably. If you want to follow it, great. Listen to the advice. You don't? I don't have a big, you know, fudge brownie and, a, and a wash it down with some Jack Daniels. I don't really care. Um, I try not to go crazy with caffeine, but I have a Coke here and there, and there's no rule against it. 